um, introduce you to some ideas about what consciousness is all about. Since we are talking about a neurobiology of consciousness, what are, the, are there any justifications, what are the assumptions and what are the expectations for such a brain science of uh, consciousness? We'll just touch upon that. And the core um, area that we'll be talking about is uh, what are called as the neural correlates of consciousness. I will enumerate a few examples of uh, what have been identified as neural correlates of consciousness. And I will just touch upon, if time permits, towards the end, about what has come to be known as the hard problem of consciousness, which some people believe is a hard problem, some people say it really isn't, so we'll touch upon those aspects a little uh, towards the end. If you can all look at me, so can the experience you're having now. Look at the screen, look at Dr. Valiath there, Dr. Narini there. Try and recall what you had for dinner last night. Try and think of what one of the things that you saw while you were coming towards this college this morning. Think of a cow. Imagine a purple cow. Think of what excites you, what makes you passionate about, what makes you go all gaga about. All that is happening in your minds now is consciousness. So there is attention. When I knocked on the podium, some of you were probably not really listening to me, just looked up and looked, looked at me, so there is attention. There is awareness. You are aware of somebody standing in front of you and speaking to you. You are hearing a voice, right? So there is awareness. There is um, alertness. First talk of the day, after a cup of tea, I'm sure most of you are alert right now. There is There are perceptions. The perception of me, the visual perception, the auditory perception, together emerging as a person here, right? So there are perceptions. There are sensations, raw sensations. The color of my tie. What is this? A red color. What does it mean? What does it mean to experience the redness of this red tie? There are memories. I, I asked you to recall about yesterday's dinner, and I'm sure that there were memories that were triggered, and other memories related to that. You imagine a cow, and then you try to imagine a purple cow. So there is imagery and there is um, related memories triggered by that too. There are emotions, right? Everything that we do, everything we, um, every, every moment of our life, there is, there is some kind of emotion, emotional background to it. Now, one of the curious things about all this, one of the really kind of um, uh, important things for all this, what you're experiencing is your personal, private experience. I told you to imagine, I asked you to imagine a purple cow, but I have absolutely no idea what kind of a cow you imagine. I never probably had that idea. Your cow is one of your cow, right? So it's a very private, subjective experience. That is something which is possibly unique about consciousness. So, maybe a decade back, everybody will correlate that sleep is nothing but meditation, and meditation is nothing but sleep. Both are sleep. But, if you read, James Austin book called The Zen and the Brain. In The Zen and the Brain, James Austin tells, person going through a task of being meditating, at the end of, I mean not at the end, in the process of uh, pursuing his meditation, his personality changes, his perception changes. If the same thing can happen in the sleep, then probably would have not got so many of these social issues, you have some personal issues, you go to sleep and you get up and you are changed. But, it, but this doesn't happen. But why, maybe a decade earlier, they told sleep and meditation is the same, uh, could be uh, many different reasons, probably may not be well advanced in the technology of really assessing the functioning of the brain, because we had a very simple you know, analog uh, EEG machines, we didn't have an advanced uh, software and all those things to analyze 
what is happening in the brain actually. We didn't have these imaging techniques. All the thing is we had just a blood pressure, ECG and all those things and coming out with some parameters. So you have an input which naturally happens when we are tired going to sleep and there are some parameters. And we learn some meditation, right? And uh, we try to do some process called as meditation and we measure and these are the com common parameters. But earlier, but what is happening in between? What is the specific processes that happens at different physiologic level that will bring out the output as the same? So generally we used to just measure the output and we, we, we they try to equal, equal that both are same. But we never bothered to see how, what is the intermittent process that is happening that both these two brings about the same output at least at the base level, at least at the physiological level. So coming to the effects of meditation in pathological states, I have a question for all of you behind. Because which movie is this from? Very good, excellent. I am happy that a few people here are still not in the state of meditation. So this is the last year vendor. Am I right? This is the year vendor. The last year vendor. Yeah, this cute guy here. So. Uh, I took this photograph because the next study is on Tai Chi meditation, which is from, uh, of course, a meditation technique developed by the Chinese. Of course, this study has been done in China by Wang et al. in uh, 2013. Here they found that uh, the T1 to T2 ratio, T1 is uh, T lymphocytes which foster the cellular immunity and uh, T2 are the lymphocytes that foster humoral immunity, all right? So they found that when the meditation was done for long enough duration, the balance was maintained well between the cellular and humoral immunity, okay? So that is what they found out in this study. This is one thing that all of us face. It's easy to talk about it. But, you know, mental peace is something that doesn't come. Probably we are made not to have mental peace. And once we attain it, that is, we have achieved nirvana and we have nothing here to do on earth. Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacham Malam Shariyasya Chavaitakena Yopaka Tam Pravam Munina Padan Jalim Tanjadevana Tosmi Desha Banda Chittasya Dhana Binding your mind to one place, desha bandha, chittasya dharana, and when that becomes tattva, pratyaya, ekathanatha dhyana, when that becomes a seamless flow, when your concentration becomes seamless, we were talking about trying to concentrate and you keep on going off it. Because the mind is like a monkey. Not just a monkey, it is a drunken monkey. On top of that, it is a drunken monkey bitten by a scorpion. And on top of that, it is a drunken monkey bitten by a scorpion on a hot tin roof in Pondicherry during summer. <laughs> that is what our mind is. And yoga is all about mind control. That is why the first sloka, when I chanted, Yogena Chittasya, Yoga for the mind, Medicine for the body, Grammar for speech. We owe it to ourselves as a human being. Abhaya, the Tamil Mudati, said, Arida, arida, manida, arida, arida. To be born a human being is a great blessing. It is the rarest of the rarest, the highest of the blessings. If we are to be true humans, if we are to manifest our humanity and try to manifest the potential divinity that Swami Vivekananda so often mentioned. I think it is very essential. We all start to take up the practice of meditation, dhyana, the holistic lifestyle of yoga, and start to live a life of 
meditative awareness. That is my wish for all of us. So many neurons have been all the time firing. And uh, what determines our behavior? What should determine? We normally neurons determine. Where the cells of the brain and hormones determine our behavior. But what should determine? That is the point. And what makes us human as distinct from animals? They say, there is a very uh, common Sanskrit uh, they say, Ahar Nidra Bhai Matsanam Chira. Samanam etat pashibhinarana. That means ahar, nidra, bhai. Math means sex. That is the same in animal and human beings. What is the difference? Buddhi eko adiko visheshu. Intellect. Ha, this is pretty tender part. Buddhi vihena pashibhinarana. Without this, we won't be like animal. So we are teaching the limbic system behavior. These are just limbic. They become aggressive like that. Just so that when you become this uh, nature, you become aggressive. But we have this also, which we don't have. Are they very small? Limited, not much. So you have to cultivate consciously good behavior. And the physical relation that the condition is. Now, you see, should our action be, behavior be guided by, by the what is behavior, what is the, your activity, your action is observed. Observe that behavior. Should it be guided by reason? Or by impulse, emotions. Emotions are limbic, but I don't know emotions are higher, higher particle also. What should guide them? Knowledge and reason are basic, of course, for what should be bigger. And you see, emotions are an integral part. We have emotions, we, we, we love, we are happy, we share, we care, that's emotion, isn't it? They are there. So, reason also is there, because different part is there, emotions are also there. And then, but give it a passion. When you teach, when you do anything, you are doing anything. I will say this, that's why it's a head, heart, and brain. Actually, heart is not emotion. Emotion is only there, but you feel here. Palpitation is there. So, for ordinary people, you say head, heart, and hand. And I say, I am very good, I want to help you, I love, love you, but I don't do anything. What is the point there? You must do it also. Isn't it? And that's why it's a service. Sometimes I say, God, we can't come back to you. Now I've seen the Gita Saram, 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 Gita Saram. Why you are going to do it? It's not here. They say, you are, you do. All wrong with us. With us, you act, you act without expectation. Thanks for the coming together of a uh, very beautiful team. All due to the efforts and the inspiration of Professor Madan Mohan, sir. I think he deserves a very big round of applause. You know, all the three speakers all have very busy schedules, all of them are busy people. And the one word from Sir, because I have been part of this right from the beginning three months ago when we started interchanging and exchanging all the emails. And it was always, sir, you decide, we'll come. Any day, we'll be there, sir. And I know the difficulties many of them have had to come here. And despite that, each and every one of them, Harsha, Ravindra, and Ambarish, they have come here, given us so much, and made sir so proud of them, for sure. Let's give them a big round. <laughs> The Department of Physiology is part of a big family. It's a big family here with Professor Henry Sir, with our young guns led by Janet, and we have Prem, we have uh, Vishnu, the back, and we have so, the Siva Kumar, our Uttara Bello, and um, anybody else I'm missing out here, Vasantan, who's not here. In the morning, we had Professor Jay Ganesh and Dr. Shobhana also with us. All the faculty members 
the PG students, the administration part of the department, all the people, be it Muthugaman, uh, be it right down to the attendance, everyone pulled the weight to make sure that this event would be a success. So let's give the entire department of physiology a very big round of These students already Fame has mentioned, you have uh, really put your heart and soul into this and all I can tell you is today you may wonder why you are doing it, but later on you will take this as a great example when you have to organize events on your own. And that is the biggest lesson that these events give you is that when you become PGs, when you get into your professional life, and have to organize things. This foundation will carry you far at that time. And those who haven't taken up this challenge that all of you have taken will miss out on that. So definitely you have gained a lot. And as Sir said, when you do the selfless service, you gain even more. So I congratulate all the student volunteers who have been part of this event. <laughs> I've already thanked our management, I've thanked everyone who has enabled this to happen. But what I must say is that our CITER team uh, is always there. Sir is the uh, linking uh, figure. The corpus callosum links the right and left brains. Similarly, <laughs> Sir links CITER and the uh, physiology department. I don't know which is right and which is left. I'm not going to get into that controversy. Um, I think we are right. <laughs> but sir is the one who keeps us. I'm on the right. So you are the center, sir. And it's wonderful to have this team at CITER with Meena, with our yoga instructors, Danush and Lata and Kavita, our BG students uh, of the first and second semester who have been here. Uh, it's wonderful to have this team and the way the CITER team and the physiology team work together, I think it is a very healthy, symbiotic relationship. So a big round of applause for the CITER team. And you must be wondering from the morning there's one young lady here standing on her feet behind that camera. And this is my dear student Krishna Veni who is completing her Masters of uh, mass communication at the Pondicherry University. And I asked her, I said, why don't you come and cover some video for us? And Krishnamini immediately has said yes. She has been standing the whole day. And I very much want to applaud to Krishna. Because the video is still comprised. We will make a short presentation. And on the site or website, hopefully within a week or two, we will have that up so that we can all share these memories. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you all for this wonderful event. Next year, we'll again be having another event and bring in some more um, qualitative and quantitative aspects that Madam has requested. We'll bring it in next year and bring on a topic that will interest you all. So with that, chanting of the Shanti Mantra, we'll conclude. And after that, a small group photo for all who are still here.